Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Opinion Machine, the show where we talk about all things gaming. My name is Killjoy, and today we're going to be talking about Mario Plus Rabbids Sparks of Hope, the sequel to Mario Plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle. And uh, I've, I've now finished the game, so I will say that there will probably be spoilers in either the footage that is on screen or what I'm saying, because I want to talk about my entire experience with this game. Now, straight off the bat, I, I've very much enjoyed playing this game. I really enjoy these kind of like turn-based sort of XCOM style, you know, usually in a grid, but this game doesn't have a grid uh, type of game because they really like... It's like chess, so you kind of got to figure out each level. You kind of got to figure out like who to take, what weapons you need, what abilities you need, what you're up against, all that good stuff. But the game itself um, is very solid. I very much enjoyed playing through the game. I haven't fully finished like 100%ing it or anything, but I very much appreciated what they have on offer here. So unlike the first game, you go to a planet, you have full freedom to explore the planet in any direction you want to go. You can do side quests, you can just do the main quests. They're all little secrets and things everywhere. Uh, whereas the first game, it was very much like you are on a path, a very linear path, and you would hit the battles along that path here. The battles are kind of like big, big blobs of black mass that you jump into and you can walk around or avoid them. Some you do have to do because they're part of the story, but others you can kind of avoid. And your random battles or your like battles that aren't really related to it are kind of done by creatures on the overworld that you can choose to avoid entirely if you want. So this game starts off by setting a very different pace and that is hey this is more of an adventure game rather than so much just like you're on a grid and fighting and that's kind of cool i like that you have a bunch of different planets you start off on like a beach planet and then you go to a snow planet and then you have a a wooded planet then a flowery planet and then the final one the fifth one which is my favorite it's like it's kind of like wasteland and i think i really like that i thought that was a cool cool setting so it's kind of that mario setting in the sense that you've got those similar uh, sort of places you go to and this game is very much based on Mario Galaxy. It's taking very heavy influence from Mario Galaxy. And that brings in one of the new mechanics, the Sparks, which are essentially Loomers and Rabbids Fuse, and each one gives you an ability. So let's talk about the gameplay itself, because the gameplay is genuinely really solid, and I think it does a good job of being an improvement on the first game. So because you don't have movement in the traditional sense uh, of moving around a grid and moving and then shooting or shooting and doing an ability in this game you can do some crazy crazy things of i'm gonna have mario move here get him to run into someone then i'm gonna move mario back and i'm gonna get luigi to run into somebody then i'm gonna run luigi back and then i'm gonna get rabid peach to run into somebody and then run her back and, Mar and then mario is gonna jump on rabid peach's head and jump uh, fly across land on the enemy i'm attacking jump on this guy's head land behind a block now luigi's gonna bounce off rabid peach's head fly over to mario bounce on mario's head fly away across the map and then shoot this enemy with luigi there so you don't you you, you can keep moving until you fire basically as soon as you choose to attack um you essentially can just keep moving and moving now some each character in the game has unique abilities so some of the characters have multiple dashes. Mario is the only character that can be up in the air and fire. He's the only character that can bounce on someone's head. Luigi is very, very powerful in the sense that he has some of the, the longest range in the game. He has the ability that when he's in Steely Stare or Overwatch mode, he can when somebody moves, he can fire through anything. And it will always guarantee to hit. You can then give him a 100% chance to crit. And then you have other characters like Peach becomes very powerful. She has a shotgun blast. She has a protection ability. And it's crazy. So like the characters themselves, they all play a different role. Mario is your standard brawler. But what makes him so good is that he can dish out a lot of damage to a single target in a turn. Or with Mario, if you've got enough range, you can choose to shoot two targets because he has two guns. But yeah, you can essentially dash, jump on someone's head three times, uh, and then shoot them twice. And that's kind of his thing. Luigi is the long range dude. He's kind of a glass cannon. He takes a lot of. He might not have a lot of health. But if you get him on a high ground, he can shoot from miles away. He can do some insane crit damage. And if you have Steely Stare upgraded a lot, you can fire multiple times on the enemy's turn. Uh, Peach, like I said, has a shotgun blast. And her whole thing is that she can put protection down so you can tank some hits without taking damage. 
uh, Bowser ha is all about area of attack, area of effect attacks. He's very good at destroying cover, and his ability sets off some fiery Mecha Koopas to go and disrupt the enemies. Um, we then have Rabbit Peach, who's the healer and also has a, a weapon that kind of ignores cover. It will blow up cover or ignore cover. Rabbit Luigi, who does has like a frisbee that hits multiple targets, and he can weaken enemies so they do less damage. Rabid Mario being one of the most interesting characters is a melee character. He has a bit of range on those melee attacks, but his whole thing is he can run up, punch a bunch of dudes, and if you get one of the upgrades, he can then move after attacking. He's the only character that can do that. And his whole ability is that he gets got a counter hit, so if you hit him when he's got that on, he'll hit you back. Uh, you have Rabid Rosalina, who's a lot of fun in this game, is basically very good at doing single target damage, can destroy cover very quickly, and has one of the most powerful abilities in the entire game, which uh, basically locks every enemy uh, in place for an entire turn, or two turns if you upgrade it. They can't attack, they can't move, they can't do anything, and if you also have the upgrade, they take increased damage from that attack. But if you attack them, they come out of that stasis. Um... And then there's also Edge as well. And Edge is like a new rabbit character who's got like this massive blade, can hit multiple enemies, also has like an Overwatch ability. Anyone walks in the area, she charges over and hits them with a the sword. Um, <clears throat> I think that's everybody. I don't think I'm missing anyone. But every character is powerful in their own right. And because of that, on top of that, you also get the sparks, like I said. And the sparks add extra abilities. So they might give you the ability for splash damage. Uh, sorry, aqua damage. And aqua basically causes someone to bounce. Um, and that means you can shoot them off the map or you can bounce them out of cover. You have ones that do ooze damage, which is basically poison, so they take damage every turn. You have fire, which causes them to run around like a crazy person and set other people on fire. There's tons of them. And there's also sparks that let you summon enemies. There's sparks that let you heal. There's tons of sparks. There's like 30 of them in the game, and they're all great in their own right. Uh, maybe there's maybe one that I'm kind of like eh on, but other than that, pretty much all the sparks, you can set your team up to have all the weaknesses you need. And that's the cool thing about this, is in this game, the enemy types, or later enemy types, have weaknesses and resistances. So you might have an enemy that's weak to, say, electric, and so you shoot them with an electric weapon, <clears throat> they'll take double the damage. Um, and, and you have to kind of balance that out, and that's what I really like about Sparks of Hope, is that you have a lot of kit at your disposal and there's multiple ways to do different levels different characters give you big bonuses but then you lose another bonus because you can only take three characters with you except for on certain missions they let you have more you might be on a mission where you're like well you know what luigi's range would be really good here because there's a lot of high ground but actually because of the types of enemies i think actually peach would be better because peach would give me that ability to protect myself for a turn so i can tank more hits well, actually, maybe Rabbit Peach might be better because she can actually heal. And then maybe your team compos composition should be Rabbit Pe Peach Luigi. But then you might be like, well, actually, Edge can hit a ton of enemies here with the blade. Or, you know, it it's certain things like that. Like, same with Bowser, you know, he's, he's very good at destroying cover. So you might be like, well, actually, if I shoot the rocket and bluff all their cover, I can always guarantee hits. Tons and tons and tons and tons of choice, and that's really what this game is. Each time you come into a battle, you have to make really difficult choices of what you want to do, who you want to field. Like honestly, Rabid Rosalina by the end of the game for me was like, your her ability is so powerful when upgraded. It's like, why wouldn't I take this? You know, but that's kind of the th fun thing about it. Everyone's going to have their preferred characters, their preferred attacks. Obviously, you can kind of customize them with a little bit with the sparks, which does make a huge difference. You can upgrade the sparks to make them even more powerful. There are tons of things in this game, and then that that choice when you're on the battlefield really helps. Um, what I'll do right now is I, I, I want to insert a couple of bits of footage um, from what I record of just some silly moments in the game because there are some fun interactions you can have. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to switch over from my current playthrough and to just show you some a couple of uh, quick 30 second switch footage things that I have and just so you can see some silly stuff that happened. <laughs> Let's go. 
yeah, as you can see, like some some fun interactions there with the, uh, Bowser's ability, specifically in both those clips. Um, just I love stuff like that, and that's the kind of fun things you can do to essentially. That's one strategy. If I hadn't used Bowser on those levels and had somebody else, I wouldn't have had those interactions. I could have possibly had different interactions by putting abilities on somebody and also having uh, other like other other characters interact on a turn. It's crazy. The combinations you can do are crazy, and that really is the big selling point of this game. Um, the story is fun. I do like the story. I like uh, you have a few characters that are voice acted, like being Beepo and Genie in the game primarily. Every other character does have some voice acting, but it's usually one or two words per dialogue box. Um, the rabbits being voice acted, I was all for. Rabbit Mario is hilarious. <laughs> Um, but it, I like I liked all that stuff. I think it added a lot of character to the game. The actual main story is just you know it's it's very much a kids game. It's nothing crazy. You just go oh this the evil thing's done something to the comet observatory. We should go see if Rosalina's okay. Let's go and do that. Um, and you know turns out she's not okay. Uh, and you know the story's the story's fun. Um, it's nothing to write home about, but it's fun and it puts you along and you meet some fun characters along the way. And I think that's kind of what the game's real strength is, is you're in these colourful landscapes, you meet some very silly characters. The, the dialogue's are not always amazing, but for the most part it's it's decent. And that married with some amazing gameplay is, is great. Um, I, I've had an absolute blast playing this game, but it is not, unfortunately, all sunshine and rainbows. I have encountered some bugs and <laughs> some very weird ones at that. In this game weirdly is quite buggy like not to the point where it's like super game breaking you can usually quit battles or you can quit to the main menu and that will kind of fix any issue you have but i i've had a few different things i've had in battles where i will um be flying you can when you jump on someone's head you you hang on to beepo and you fly across the map um where i've been shot or clipped in the landscape and it's just sent me straight through the map and i've died and taken damage uh that's happened about two or three times to me i've had bugs where I've escaped the movement circle, so you can get outside of the movement circle. I don't know how I did it, but that has happened. And I've also had a bug where I got stuck. Uh, I basically restarted a battle in the enemy's turn, which then led me to be stuck in the high-speed movement part of that, and the camera got stuck. In which case, I actually have footage of that, so I'm going to show you that now. <sighs> There you go. There is a weird clip of me getting stuck in the enemy's turn. Very, very, very odd. And I will say they have definitely hurt the experience I've had. I've had a lot of other little little bugs and a few things with the control. Minor things, but like it all adds up over the course of playing through it. I know in some instances, like some things haven't spawned correctly. Um, I'm not, I've spoke to a friend of mine who's also had an issue with things not ticking up or not correctly working i've had like some buttons in the game not work where i've gone and like tapped the button with beepo and it just won't activate it's just things like that that are frustrating and it doesn't completely detract from my experience but it's definitely i'm looking forward to this game getting a patch and fixing a lot of this stuff because it is annoying right it's not the end of the world but it is annoying and i shouldn't have to deal with this stuff while i'm trying to play the game you know like i said you can fix pretty much any of it by quitting to main menu coming back in and it's all right but it is it is annoying you know overall i think the game is just a really fun package i think this is a really good example of like doing a sequel that just really improves on the previous game you've got a different take on the xcom style you're not locked to a grid now you have your open movement but you still have you know your cover your shots your abilities each character gets two actions a turn and none of your movement actions cost which is crazy. So you can do a ton of movement attacks and then you can choose to do your ability and shoot. And I think that's what I really like about this series. It's not about luck based stuff. I mean, you've got, you've got 100% chance to hit 0% 50. That is it. And then after that, it's like, well, there's things that can negate that. There's a ton of movement options. Like, there's so much fun stuff here. Um, 
like I said, I think the gameplay is a, 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 debatable whether you want to say it's an improvement. I think it's an interesting direction. I really like it, but I like the gameplay in the first game as well. But I do like the, the more freedom I've got here. The story's fun. It's not anything groundbreaking, but it is fun. There's a lot of silly dialogue in there. Overall, I do think the game is good. And I would recommend that people pick it up if you want to play something that's fun and takes a bit of brain power. I mean, the final battle in this was a hell of fun. You know, the final battle really was just like, it essentially gives you three battlefields at once. You get to use all your characters. All I wanted, I was like, yes, I finally get to use all my characters, level them all up. And just had an absolute blast with it. And I think that's, you know, that's the sort of stuff I love about it. I was like, oh, right, yeah. This is why I like this game. Fun final bosses. In fact, all the boss fights are genuinely pretty fun. They make you think. And overall, just a solid game. It's not perfect. It's not perfect by any means. Um, one thing I should mention is there. It, I have had some serious heavy frame rate drops playing this game. In cutscenes, in animations, in certain parts of the world. Like, the game runs at 30 frames a second but it is it struggles at points and yes it is a turn-based game so it's less likely to affect things but i would like to see that the frame rate improved because i notice it really hard in certain parts of the game where it drops and it's really jarring um you know i got through the game and enjoyed it but you know the bugs that i had plus the frame rate stuff it definitely brought the game down a little bit for me but overall i had a good time I will probably go back and finish off 100% in certain parts of it. And I am very much looking forward to the DLC, specifically the Rayman stuff, because I, I can't wait to get my hands on that, so it should be good. But yeah, there you go, guys. That is my thoughts on Sparks of Hope. If you are, if you like the first one, you will like the second game. If you didn't like the first one, you might like the second game. It is different enough, but if you didn't like the battle or the combat side of it, I don't think you're going to enjoy it. So hopefully that answers that question. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. If you liked the video, hit like. If you want to see more content like this, then hit subscribe. Links for Facebook and Twitter will be down below in the description as always. And until next video, I will see you then.